Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. This is Youth Worker on Fire. I've got John Clendenin here. And John, we've known each other for a while. How long have we known each other? Uh, at least... I think 30 years. I think it has been... Well, 85. Uh, you, didn't you say 85? That's, that's right. the year I came so here. So 32 years. I was wondering if that was your first year or if I just was not aware of you or wasn't at the high school. So nope, no. nope. That's the year. August 85, I moved to... The, actually, July 85, I moved to the area. Oh, where'd you go to college, by the way? I went to Duke University after going to Eustis high school. Oh, I'm a North Carolina guy. Grew up there. I know about Duke. Duke's a yeah. great place. Tell me what you're doing now. Uh, currently, what I do is I'm basically a work-at-home dad, which is a funny place to go um, when you've paid what my parents paid to send me yeah, yeah. to Duke. But <laughs> that was I, a great position, though, so go ahead. Yeah, well, it, was, it was where I really felt called to be, at least, you know, for now, while my kids are young, mm -hmm. to be as present with them as possible. So I do web development primarily for the real estate industry, working kind of on the deep, deep, deep back end stuff you don't usually get to see yeah. on the front end. That's where the hard stuff is in, com in computer technology. That's where stuff that pays the most, although yeah. a lot of it is, is really learning to use tools that other people have built. You, yeah. know, uh, yeah. you know, just in this industry audio video you know you're not learning how to build a video camera you're using a video camera that somebody else has already put a lifetime of work into you're just learning how to operate it that's and right it, that's increasingly true in in my field as well but I, I do tell my kids I try to relate to them my job is not on the phone all day having mm -hmm. you know serial sales mm -hmm. conversations mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I can step out of mentally but mine's like kind of like taking an SAT I take an SAT all day it's funny that anybody would choose to do that, but that helps them understand what it means to interrupt me. You know, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, where was I? What was I doing? Uh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. What did you major in at Duke? Public policy studies. Why did you go there for that? The old. Oh, I didn't go there for that. I went there for biomedical engineering. Really? And realized that the good people of Eustis High School failed to impress upon me the importance of taking calculus here. <laughs> <laughs> and not waiting until there. So uh, oh, wow. my, my freshman year, first semester, I started taking calculus with a lot of people that had already taken calculus uh. and were also very smart. And so I really struggled with that and with just with the coursework in general. And I was missing what we call my HTH, my hometown honey. Yeah, you know, that's you, right. you know. Because your wife. It was, became, eventually became my wife. So it was a good decision there as yeah. far as priorities go. Yeah. And uh, anyway, long story short, Duke was one of the few schools in the nation, actually the only school in the nation at the time, that had an undergraduate degree in public policy. So that was something that interested me. And as far as just opening and closing doors for what the Lord might want me to do, uh -huh, uh -huh. that left the most open. Yeah. Um, for me, so that's the direction I went. Now, how did you and Heather know each other, your, your wife? And you all went to high school together. Uh, this Dude, is how far 30, back did this you know? 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> you, got, you got 10 the, seconds for that answer. The, yeah, first time I met her was when she was in seventh grade. She was trying to do hurdles here at the high school. It was yeah. one year I ran track, and they brought some uh, people from Faith Lutheran, the uh, private school, mm -hmm. and she was, she was a gymnast, so she was trying to do the hurdles like a gymnast would do that. And it caught my attention <laughs> because just gracefully in a way yeah, that it, yeah. it just didn't look normal, you know. <laughs> but I, that's the first time I remember seeing her. And then uh, fast forward a few years and my friend told me that I should go out with her because he had a date one night. I didn't have a date. And they told me that she was a prude. I'd like her. <laughs> In all seriousness, yeah, yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, good to have your friends seeing you in that light, seeing uh. her in that light. So I called her. She turned me down because, lo and behold, she actually had something to do that night. Oh, really? Heaven forbid. Yeah. <laughs> and out of we always tell it that out of sheer, I don't know, pride, I said, "Well, well, well, can we go with me then to the uh, FCA Christmas party?" Oh. Which was providential that our our um, our dating had that kind of as its foundation. Mm -hmm. So that's where we went. 
our first yeah, date. Yeah. Fellowship of Christian Athletes is a big deal at your high school. Yeah. Tell me the influence that volunteers and youth workers have had on you. We'll have to narrow it down a little bit just because I, I am old enough to have had way too many for the right, time allotted. Right. But I, I give that some thought, you know. Um, you told me not to prepare. but Oh, I, no, you're, I, you're yeah, an organizer, though. I can't help but think about <laughs> some of those people and it, and it right. goes all the way back I was raised for better or worse in the the Episcopal Church and mm-hmm. so there were people that were there there was a, a past the priest there was my dad's uh, best friend oh wow and his son was a friend of mine as well because they lived literally one block away mm-hmm. he was in influence I have to be a, a little careful probably as we talk because this is uh, this video is forever, as they say, once it's on the, <laughs> right. on the internet, and some of these names not, must be changed <laughs> right, in order to, right, protect to protect the, the innocent, the right. guilty, actually. Is oh, the guilty, so the guilty, either yeah. one. Kind of an interesting little segue is that in in the Episcopal Church, they have this concept. It's similar in other denominations of like an Emmaus weekend, uh, a revival weekend. In our church, which was not that bubbling um, with passion um, had one of these weekends specifically for the youth. I forget what it's called in the Episcopal Church. I think it's Happenings or Awakenings is yeah. one of the other yeah. version. And they got all worked up and for my little 100 person church mm-hmm. they went out and got all excited and got a, a youth worker. And that was that's the first person I kind of thought of as a volunteer who impacted me. And she, she worked really hard at singling me out in a sense I think she I was at an age and stage mm-hmm. where she wanted to love on me and also use me in, in a sense to try to draw other people she knew if I was going it would make it You'd okay have some buddies yeah that it would make it out. okay yeah for others how you old know, were you at that time that must have been 16 yeah like okay all right yeah. I do think of being in a little town of Eustis there are staff workers lack of a better word at all the other churches. And so we, we would kind of, I think the teens are still doing this. They float around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if somebody were to ask you what church you go to, I could answer, but I think most of the other people say, I don't know. I kind of see him over here. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. he's at First Baptist sometimes because mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I went on choir tour with them. Yeah, right. Um, he's at Trinity sometimes because there's so many other friends that would go and mm-hmm. hang out with Doug Edwards. Yeah. Um, that's just kind of remarkable that all these people, they all have a common goal in the sense mm-hmm. of trying to reach us, mm-hmm. the youth, for Christ, and yet they still have a they have a day job that has so much to do with um, how many people are in your youth group, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and they've got to try to draw people. And I, of course, I believe that that is the best um, product of parachurch ministries. That Putting yeah. people in the real church. Yeah, yeah. I should right. call it the real church, but the right the church the the, 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 commun- the church at large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And getting them, you know, past Wednesday night and there on Sunday morning, um, getting actual getting the word, exercising, and all the means of grace. And yeah, like that. So, um, and so I could go through that list. I, it's probably not great use of your your time here, but there were some. There were definitely no, some that, fine. that reached me better than others. I remember mm-hmm. one specific guy from one church um, who I, I, likewise I had done a couple of things with them just because everybody knows everybody else. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of got in my face and said, you know, I'm not going to push you to come to my church, but I will push you to be the best Christian that you can be. I thought wow. that's a good word, but he presented in such a way that mm-hmm. even for somebody that wanted all those same things, it kind of it kind of turned me off. I was yeah, like, hey, we don't yeah. know each other well enough for you to say that. Yeah, he yeah, didn't kind yeah. of have the capital with me. And first of all, I don't know if you would have said it that boldly to mm-hmm. me, but mm-hmm. you and I did have enough of a rapport where mm-hmm. I would have said, "Well, I know Doug, and I know what he means by that." In mm-hmm. which case, in this other case, um, not not as much. Yeah, and, and if I said things right, it was because somebody better taught me to yeah, say. Right. Because I'd have probably said more wrong things if it wasn't for mentoring, if it wasn't for mm-hmm. for people. Uh, and I did some wrong things. It said some wrong because you know when you when you live life, you're going to do right things, you're going to do stupid things. Yeah. And life's going to happen. Yeah. And so um, as long as we're in the body, that's right. It's going to be. So, so that's good. That's good to hear, though, because um, if you if you volunteer, if you work with adolescents middle school through high school, young adults, 
it's messy. Yeah. It's messy. There's a guy by the name of Mike Iaconelli, and he wrote a book called Messy Christianity. Yeah. And he worked with a lot of students and trained a lot of youth workers the tune of about 9,000 a year just in conference, not counting the wow. hundreds of thousands later. And quite a unique guy. Working with people's messy. Yeah. And we say right things, we do right things. People are in the, a different mindset one time a day. Yeah. Something happens during that day. Their mindset's totally changed. You say something that would have been okay earlier that day and later that day. Absolutely. It's just, it hit them the wrong way and they're a mess. Go ahead and finish what you're saying though. Well, I was just going to say that, that, that I think the, the disservice, the difficult part of the student and volunteer or you know youth pastor relationship is that there's some pressure on the youth pastor to to despite words to the contrary to try to to live as a as a model and for the student and the student would probably all too eager to believe that you can do no wrong mm -hmm. and therefore they come crashing down when they realize that you do have feet of clay and mm -hmm. that you do have moods and you do have you know things going on outside of Wednesday night from mm -hmm. 7 to 8 you may yeah. have a wife you may have your own kids you may have mm -hmm. your own financial pressure yeah and uh, so I, I would think that that would be very difficult and pertinent to, to you know, your audience that they figure out how to walk that line and be a model a 360 degree model and let the kids see who you are yeah holy Mm -hmm. fully without vomiting on them and you know kind of just becoming a peer which is not what you want either. Well that's why I loved uh, retreats. I love coming on campus and, and I'm not the only guy who's done that. There's, there's, there's hundreds uh, maybe thousands of, of guys across the years and that have done that that have done such a good job and left a legacy for many of us to, to try yeah. to, to fill in the gaps in a way that it wasn't. You know uh, I call uh, student ministry a a very fragile eco environment. Yeah. Churches too, schools are. I mean, th these environments that we are in on a regular basis are pretty fragile. Yeah. It doesn't take much. Uh, you throw a, a cog or a screw into an engine of a right. vehicle, Boom, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it falls apart, blows up. The pieces have to be put back together. Different things, mm -hmm. and the same thing with those environments. But the retreat. People saw how good I was. They saw how bad I was. They yeah. saw how tired I was. Yeah, you and get up in the morning. I, mm -hmm. That's right. They found out I was not a morning person, even though we had to do 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. Yeah. yeah, that's and, a good and, point. Right, and different things like that. And I saw that about them. So you, yeah. you become real when you're able to concentrate time and space. Yeah, that's and, a good point. And your, your volunteers who were getting up with you oh my. at five, that's when they saw, I, I think that's a whole nother level because then you guys say, look, for this event to go well, mm -hmm. I need you to do A, B, and C and mm -hmm. not mess, not, we can't mess them up. Right. And right. that's difficult when you've used all your charm and charisma right. to lure these guys in and then they get behind the curtain, they're like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> He just yelled at me because I didn't, you know, I forgot something uh, that I thought was unimportant. And uh, so yeah. I think that's, but that's part of it. I mean, that's part of, that's a potential for a great growth moment in your relationship mm -hmm. and for them also potential for one of those, some a gear being thrown in that delicate yeah. Uh, yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah. there's times that, that uh, I have broken people, I've hurt people because I'm real Yeah, and I wasn't, doing well that day. Yeah. I wasn't doing well that week. I, I mean, yeah. there's there's times that your family, you wake up. I remember I did some all-nighters because I, I, get, yeah, I don't like all-nighters, <laughs> but I remember doing medias for projects for that, that were, those were absolutely volunteer. Yeah. It was not hard to do those things. Those are just elements that you needed to do to be with people. Right. And I remember uh, after we had children, I came in when morning at 6 a.m. and crawled into bed. My wife turned over. She says, what are you doing? <laughs> Those kids have to go to, yeah. go to school. Yeah. And I've been with them all day. Yes. And, and While you, take you were them. doing, yeah. Yes, honey. You know, <laughs> no sleep that day. You know, and so. Um, it's hard to perform well and, um, when you. Yeah, yeah. Athletes will tell you at least. Did you play some sports? You played some sports, didn't you? I What'd did. you play? Uh, here at at Eustis uh, in high school. I played uh, basketball and football primarily. And then, uh, as I said, I ran 
track one year. Uh, one year out of yeah. I don't even remember why I did it. I think just, there was a coach and he asked me to do it, and I said, "Why not?" A lot of times those guys are trying to stay in shape for the other, you know, right. for the other sports. Right. So tell me how those guys had influence on you. Tell me why they were important. Well, to okay, you. that's that's um, that's a big st big story and a big part. I I think like a lot of uh, young people, I had dreams of being much better in sports than I ever was. And my dad was a coach mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. professionally. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I had that ingrained in me fairly early on. You know, the dream was to be good enough to get a scholarship. Um, then that would take pressure off mom and dad. It would help mom and dad to get along better because I, I was the youngest of three. I'd seen yeah. the, the money pressures that come with paying that tuition bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All that. So, yeah, they, you know, my, my parents were both school teachers and uh, yeah. of various sorts. And so that, that, was, that was a big part of the story that we will not go into right, necessarily. Right, they, right. The, the school definitely helped me out financially in a lot of ways uh, to meet my parents' needs. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But the, the coaches were, were, were very influential. They're all, you know, father figures. And I can go down a list of those that were fantastic influences and some that just showed me what I did not want to be. In fact, there's one that uh, I, in my younger years, would have said kind of ruined football for mm -hmm, me because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the same time I was going through this, this change in, in my life, you know, just physically and in the teen years and puberty and all that. Right. It went from being a, a tremendously enjoyable activity that we just did for fun and, and nothing's better than being good at something that you just love to do anyway. Right, right. From that to making it something of a job um, where mm -hmm. you had to perform, um, where it was grueling, that that took me, that kind of you know extinguished one of my dreams in yeah. a sense. Yeah, yeah. Which is just a childhood dream, but still, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was formative. Taking things to, a, yeah. as a coach, taking things to a level that things shouldn't be taken to at a certain age. Yeah, well, at least of knowing your team of knowing the individual personalities and the ability. That's one thing I, I, I will drop the name of Duke, where Coach Krzyzewski in, in basketball there is, is, a, is an absolute mastermind at dealing with each individual in the way that they need to be dealt with. It's one yeah. it was famous that he would go and... He saw them as people. Yeah, well he saw them as people and he had a creativity and a strategic mindset and also just a lot of experience probably of messing up mm -hmm. to, to draw on that he would go be able to go from college to coaching pros in the Olympics for instance and deal with a LeBron James and be able to get him to buy in and Kobe Bryant get him and be on the same team yeah yeah anyway so uh, these he had paint a vision coaches that I'm this one particular guy that I'm thinking of at, at the moment is one that just didn't understand how to talk to John Clendenin and and if I could be blunt, a guy in Eustace who is going to eventually end up at, at Duke, you can't talk to him in the same way that you talk to a guy who is going to take a different career path. You know, right. Um, right. Were, we had some fantastically gifted guys, team who were just animals, but you could, you, and you had to talk to them one way, <laughs> motivate them one way, discipline right. them one way, right. and that just wasn't the way. Yeah, one size doesn't fit all. No, and I'm sure that applies to youth. To youth, oh, uh, ab ministry. absolutely. It applies to everything in life. Yeah. You know, and, and we do take for granted. I mean, there's times I took for granted. One size fits all. You can't. Yeah. And then you, you end up with a real mess in the ecosystem <laughs> when yeah. one size fits all because yeah. people don't fit into those molds. We don't know what's in people's minds. I mean, even when we know people, no. we don't know what's in their minds because all of us have certain things that we have to hold on to, we can't let go of, yeah. because it's too dangerous to open that area of our life open to someone and say, here it is, you know, right. shoot at it. And, and so we all have that, and that's okay. Yeah, we have to work off assumptions. In a sense, somebody walks in the room and you think, there are certain assumptions about this person right. that I have to make, at least at first, until you get mm -hmm. to know them. And then you mm -hmm. start thinking, oh, well, they're kind of like this other person, and I know, how, I know how to deal with them. Well, they're not exactly, but you're learning. You're yeah. learning, and then yeah. you and then you make mistakes, and you realize, okay, this person's absolutely unique. Right, and you hope you make that absolutely. mistake yeah. soon enough to where soon you can connect. Gentle. Yes, that's right. Correct, correct the, yeah. the, the the damage you've done because, you know, and it's okay to 
for those who are wanting to or looking at youth working or co which is coaching, teaching, yeah. it's volunteering. You know, you're going to make mistakes. It's not a matter of whether or not you're going to make mistakes. It's when you're going to make the mistake yeah. and how you're going to recover from that mistake and how you're going to bring people along with you on the trip. I love what John Maxwell said. Uh, Dr. Maxwell is a guy. His goal was to train a million leaders worldwide, and he's trained over 153 million now. Wow. You know, yeah. and his goal was one. And that's something, you know, you shoot here, but it may catapult when you have those goals yeah. in your life. And the one thing that uh, he said about people was that you heard the phrase, it's uh, lonely at the top. Right. And if you've read anything about Maxwell, here's what he says. If it's lonely at the top, it's because you didn't take anybody with you. Oh, yeah. And what that, sure. and me, my interpretation of, of that for myself is, did I run to the top with people who could not run hmm. and left them far behind, or did I encourage people and try to figure out how they could run with me sure and when you figure those things out or if they can't run that I would walk to make sure that we still all got yeah. there yeah and that's the master coach that's the coach you want to be a you know mentor doesn't have to be somebody that's in your presence he can be the guy who wrote the book he's the guy who right. can be on, on, a, on a podcast he's the guy who you can watch him because TV's filming him all the time or her. Yeah. Wow, how did they, wow, that was a volatile situation. How did they diffuse that? Yeah. And we see that because you want to take people with you to the top. A coach, you could take LeBron and Kobe That's and right. those guys that are beyond almost coaching. That's right. But they have to be coached because they still have to work with other personalities. Great point. Well, there's somebody that is at the top. In essence, the, the players you, that we mentioned are at the top, but they had someone in Coach K, if nothing else, mm -hmm. who was alongside them and that they could still, they would still give attention to. It's part of that's coachability, you know. You know, we don't have Heather here today, and Heather, um, your wife is, <laughs> I don't know how you scored her, but anyway, she's, uh, she's unbelievable. Probably, once you're a gymnast, you're always a gymnast. Yeah, uh, yeah that's very I, central to what, to her identity. Her DNA, The, the right. years that she poured into and then, um, yeah, in the gymnastics. And I knew her as a diver. That's right. After she would injured herself and was looking for sort of another outlet. Oh, I didn't realize that's the reason she did yeah, it. Yeah, she that. had a she had in essence a career-ending injury in yeah, gymnastics. Yeah, will do it. Was performing at an elite level. She was with Brandy. Yeah, we talked about John, Brandy Johnson, yeah, right? Uh, in the same gym, teammates really together. Um, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and. And then injured herself, as is so common to do, and was mm -hmm. looking for something else. It's kind of interesting. It, we could go into this metaphor deeply in this metaphor, but she went into in the diving. What was interesting about that was that she had been trained for whatever it was ten years at least to land on your feet in gymnastics, and so suddenly in diving, she needs to land on her head. Uh. And everything in her said, you can't do that. You oh, don't wow. land on your head, wow. right? I never even thought of yeah, that. Yeah, it's a powerful metaphor wow. for, for switching, for taking, you know, learning and trying to apply it in a, in a different world. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I married well. Uh, the Lord was good to me yeah, in, yeah. In, that, in that way. And she's well, still to both of you, hard. because it's like your friend said, you you both had some, uh, some common goals in life without even knowing yeah. each other, or before you dated and fell in love and you know have a family. How many children do you have now? Four. Four children. Unbelievable. They're the blessing and why also most likely to beat my head against the wall uh, at any given time. Really? Like, I can't believe I love Talk them. about coaching on a personal level, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is such a great point. And, and I have to include in that list of sort of volunteers and mentors some of the other parents of friends and girlfriends that the Lord put in my life. And there's one in particular I'm thinking of who was, was a parent of, of a, a girlfriend who I, they really didn't date that long, mm -hmm. but um, was just such a great guy. And I remember sitting in his lawn, he was trying to do some sprinkler repair and he, he was pressing with his foot. He first of all kicked me in between the legs, you know, by accident, uh. and then let out this swear word. And I was like, what did you just do this godly man? But what an awesome example of some guy who could, he would first of all pull me, he hardly knew me. And you know, he probably he's like, oh, this is whoever, this is boyfriend number 18. Number 18. Yeah. <laughs> but he pulled me alongside 
And he would tell me things like this. He'd say, I always tell my daughter, he said, you know, I try to be a perfect parent, but I'm not. And I just hope you literally will make a list of things that you want to do differently than me. And don't forget. Don't forget. And it took such humility for somebody to say that to, her, to his daughter and much less to me mm -hmm. sitting there after he just kicked me. That it, it really, you know, it's, a, it's almost a, a measuring mark uh, for me as a parent that I'll refer back to sometimes. Am I, am I showing that same kind of humility, even as I'm um, in charge of my kids, fully in charge, fully the disciplinarian, am I still showing them humility to say, look, I, I need you to remember these things that I've, where I've messed up, where I've sinned against you, and yeah, don't, and don't our, you do them. Right, and our children don't want to see us mess up. They really don't. They struggle with that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it is a very good thing when, as, as parents, we go, listen, it's, it's no excuse, Yeah. but I do things yeah. that I don't want to do. There's th things I say it's that I have to apologize yeah. about, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, Paul yeah, said it yeah. pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Things I want to do, I, I don't do. Yeah, um, yeah. What were we going to say? I'm just going to try to make sure, I want to make sure before time ran out that we got Clark Blake in. Please, talk about into Clark. The, into the and Coach Blake, for those of you guys who don't know, Coach was the, the ultimate coach, mentor, uh, tried to do everything as well as possible, recon Marine, Vietnam, came here. And by the way, he was the only teacher that remembered my wife's name. She, she came, she had one year on campus here. Oh, yeah. Senior year. She came from Upper State, New York. They moved into town. And the one thing she always remembered about Coach Blake was he remembered her name. Yeah. Which Big is, deal. So Coach, Coach is interesting because he, you know, as a high school teacher, as a coach, he has literally just thousands of people going through his life for as long as he coached. Right. Um, and he managed to give them all the impression that they knew him really well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think he, in some sense, did know them because he knew the types, you know. Yes. But yeah. I think that of the number of people that list him as one of their influences, and yet, even for me, and I feel like I got sort of an extra dose of him through my time with Fellowship Christian Athletes. Right, yeah. Um, and you did. That, if, you, if you're a part of that, that was Coach's volunteerism. Yeah, that's exact what we're talking about with yeah. you on your retreats, those guys that kind of come alongside you as a volunteer. You're training them while they're helping you do your job at the same time, and that's what... That's what um, we did with, with Coach. And, um, I, but I still think the number of hours, the total number of hours was so small mm -hmm. that I actually spent with him. It, it's dwarfed by, by other sports coaches. Say, take a basketball coach that I had for four years and just the hours in practice versus the times that I saw Coach. And what it means to me is the power of influence that goes beyond direct contact. It's probably exactly what you're talking about, where you can have a mentor that you've never even met. Mm -hmm. He would mm -hmm. never know your name. Right. He's right. A, he was an author. But this is this is a scale down from that. But that's that's in some sense the way that um, you were an influence to me, is that we didn't have a ton of time, but there were a lot of people that were influenced by you who then turned around or were my friends. Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm, there yeah. were, there, I was observing mm -hmm. and I always knew that your church was this oasis of uh, a lot of other churches that were eh, like mine, kind of ebbing. Yeah, yeah. And it was because of the Lord's faithfulness through you. And and, and I don't know, I, it's, it, maybe it sounds like blowing smoke, but I really think that no, no, that, no, is, I get it. that is powerful mm -hmm. And you always underestimate your ability is the way that your influence radiates out outward. I appreciate that. That 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 means a lot to me, and especially to be in light <laughs> of Clark Blake. I talked to to Clark yesterday, and he's already done a podcast. We're Good. not gonna. We talked a little bit about that, and I doubt if he's gonna do. We've done so many interviews on different levels of Clark yeah. that we're gonna pull some other videos sometime and. Yeah. and pull that together because he's such a humble guy. He, he doesn't always feel like he needs or should right. be out there. And uh, for us to talk about him, of course, is a big deal. Yeah. Um, Statistically, he probably gets mentioned a fair, oh, fair yeah, amount. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of Oh, yeah. Funny. And, and he should. Yeah. And he should. He needs that encouragement. And uh, also... Even if... Right. But but even for the sheer amount of influence and hours and, and yeah. things he did for his family as well as for others and... Yeah. And for people watching this thinking they have a certain 
image of what they want to be and what it would take right, right. to influence people. And Coach breaks a lot of molds in that way, especially yeah, in his, his yeah. humility and the fact that he, he, he does get mentioned in these videos and everything. Right, you right. Know, and, 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 well, um, he gets mentioned for, the, for, I'll tell you why, too. There's a gal by the name of, and this is for, for everyone that, that's watching, or, and that is that uh, Vanessa Van Edwards, not a relative of mine, wish she was, but she does, uh, her whole thing is on body language. She has mm. podcasts on uh, and, and courses on body language and, yeah. and, and how to influence people. And she's an introvert herself. She wasn't really one. She looks like an extrovert. Sure. But her thing was, how can you be the most influential person in the room? And the reason we talk about Clark Blake is because he... Basically, she could have watched Clark and derived all that stuff from him. Yeah. He made eye contact. Yes, right. He turned his body towards you. He was engaged with you when you were yeah. there. He would say your name. I remember at different baccalaureates, he would, re he, would, he would mention everyone's name. He didn't have him speak every time. I right. think he'd say, guys, now I just did that. It's, it's too much. But he would mention everyone's name in that senior class at a baccalaureate. Yeah. And he would say something funny or particular yeah. about that individual, right. and that was part of his speech. That was the bulk of his speech, yeah. because that's who he was. And she talks about that. She says, "You want to be the most interesting person in the room?" She says, "Those two things are big." He said, "But the the other thing is," she said, "Never talk much about yourself. Right. Keep asking them about them." Yeah. Dig, 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 dig. And then you become the most influential person in the room. That's really funny you mentioned that because I, I one of my images of Coach as he would teach mm -hmm. or coach. He was always up on his toes. When he would talk, he would get up on his toes mm -hmm. and, and he would be uh, to, as if to emphasize a point. You always got the sense that he really believed in what he was saying mm -hmm. and he was, he was wishing he could push it into your brain. He's, you yeah. know, he couldn't do your part as a listener for you, but he wanted to. Mm -hmm. and you're right. He uh, Everything from his daily habits, the fact that he would get up at, I don't even know, 3 a.m., 3, 4 a.m., yeah, to exercise, to right. jump on the day. He was always just leaning forward, pressing forward, and that was, it came out in his body language, like you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is we can't, we don't have to be like everybody else right. to be an effective teacher, coach, worker, yeah. business owner. We don't have to be that way. It's just that we, we will bring the elements of those different people like Coach Blake and right. the piece that we can do, we take from them. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, and even Coach would say, listen, listen, I'm this way because of a lot of different things that happened in my life. Don't try to, That's right. I'm not trying to make you be right. like me. A lot of those I things you wouldn't want in your life. Right. I mean, knowing his personal testimony, they right. would not wish that. Yeah. Would not wish that on someone. Yeah, and that would be an absolute mistake for me to try to be Coach Blake right. from where right. I'm at and who God made me to be. I ha absolutely have to take all those influence. And, and God made us in a wonderful way. Our brain works really well in that way, synthesizing yeah. Yeah. all those images, all those models of people, all those moments of the parents and the friends and the coaches and the grandparents, mm -hmm. and then putting them together into somebody like, well, this is my calling. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is this is my calling. I'm able to do this better than anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Right. And you're, you're going to influence people that nobody else will influence. Yeah. We individually have so many people. In fact, uh, I think it said the introvert that knows one or two people, that's all they care to know, they, over a period of time, still... Sure. have reached tens of thousands of people. Yeah, right. And that's, that's just, that's for just better the, or worse. The, for better <laughs> or worse, uh, they've influenced those people. I, I don't know where, where life is leading you guys overall as a family. In fact, you don't either because when you have young kids, life and world, the world changes. But it's those right. children of yours, yeah. my children, one thing that I did kept in my mind when after Colleen and I were married, after we had Ryan, our first child, mm -hmm and we had our three children was whoever I work with, whoever I help now will be the people that are going to influence my kids. Yeah, that's good. And the importance of what I do is far reaching, far beyond what's right now. Yeah. And I try to emphasize that with my volunteer staff. I had some staff that stayed with me, some volunteers, and it's just like, I mean, this is so unique for me. 
because John, you and I, we don't get together that often. I mean, I think we talked about maybe it's 15 years or 10 years last time we talked. Or yeah, yeah, it was or, our class reunion the last yeah. time we talked, which right. was whatever eight years ago. Okay, so. uh, eight. All right, just feels like 15, right? So, uh, because our paths lead us different ways. But here we were at another event, another friend, David Kelly. That's right. And uh, another awesome example. A great, great of what example. We've been talking about somebody that influenced right. in a completely different way. A lot of people. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people would refer to him. As, he and Karen, they're quite a dynamic couple who yeah. don't try to be dynamic. They just become them. They're them. Yeah. And they have certain things in their life. But that brought us together again. You uh, had influence on a friend of mine, Matt Johnson, and you know, love Matt and his family. And so we've just had all these intertwinings because it was important that when I came, that whoever came into my life was important. And I didn't know who we were going to reach. I didn't oh, know absolutely. who we were going to touch. No, you don't know. And, and you have to go in with that in mind. There's things I wish I could take back things I said, things I did yeah. that alienated people. There's yeah. things that I wish I could duplicate <laughs> right. that and I I've did to engage yeah. people, you know, and different things like that. But, uh, you know, if there's a final thing that you want to say to people that are, because you are in absolute, I, I consider teachers partially volunteers, even if they volunteer nowhere else, because they're yeah. never paid what they're worth, yeah. that, that they deserve a whole lot more. People go, oh, they get this and they get that. No, 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 no. No, no, the psychological effect of dealing with, with multiple people on a daily basis, children and their parents, because yeah. as parents, we're there to protect and nurture our kids. That's right. And sometimes that means we attack a teacher. That's we're, right. we're upset with a coach because we didn't see things the way that coach or that teacher saw them. So to coaches and teachers and, and people who deal with the public, are uh, to coaches and teachers in particular, are never paid what they are worth. And how, how do you think those influences are in the public school? And we're here in the public school, and yeah. and we're very fortunate. Eustace High has this facility, and they're allowing yeah. me to, to to do this podcast here. Tell me how how did the God influence that we we like to say in the public school system the faith you know group or people right? How has that affected uh, our community and our, our our schools? Well, the twenty second obvious comment is that public schools are, are fundamentally different from when I was here. It's it's so different because culture is, is different. Culture is different. And right. we homeschool our we homeschool our children. So mm -hmm. that's the choice that we have right. we have made and I'm, my experience with public schools is limited now. And we did we did all three. We public we did them all. we're, we're yeah. a little schizophrenic. We're yeah. Public and private and homeschooled. But, so yeah. Uh, you know, for, as for what I can speak to, I, I can say that the positive influences the the Christian influences in, in my life came through the school, even if, as they weren't officially sanctioned by the school, right? Yeah. Uh, I grew so much more as a Christian, as a believer, even just as a, as a young man, through my interactions with things that were related to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, mm -hmm. much more than my church. I mean, my church, I wish had been more central to that. Uh, right. I certainly tried really hard for my kids mm -hmm. to make the church the center and not the school or the parachurch. But mm -hmm. in my life, there was a void there and it was filled, uh, the Lord filled it through um, FCA. And I, and I can't overestimate the power of both the peer influences yes. yeah. and of the volunteer influences. And not just Coach Blake and not just you, but this team that, uh, again, each one had their own constituency, one's from the Baptist Church, one's from the Evangelical Free Church, one's from you fill in the blank. Right, um, right. But they all came, in a sense, were all coming to campus. Yeah. However yeah. they could. And we had individual relationships with them. And we saw, I think as, as a student, you saw, well, why is this guy here? You know, I know he's not getting paid bonus. There's no, like, bonus money right. for being on campus. There's no bonus money for doing this multimedia at the pep rally. Right, as you, right. As you did. I think in our brains, we understood that you were trying to love us, that you were trying to love love God. I think just sort of... That, that's huge for me to hear, too, because we don't always sense that when we're doing those things. Uh, no, and I don't know if I would have articulated it at the time. And, you know, right, teenagers, right. nobody can be more self-absorbed than But there's a, something a there without able to put your finger on it. Yeah. There's something that says, he's, I think he's here for me, or yeah. for us. Yeah. yeah. At some point, it kind of gets on your radar screen. You're like, okay, he doesn't, he's not paid by the school. And he's 
I think he's with some church or something, but he's not making me. I don't go to his church. You know, why does he care, why does he care? about yeah. me? Why is he doing this? It seems cool. I, I go back to the first time, the initial connection I had with you, going to walk into that pep rally, being a freshman, which is exciting off of the first pep rally, which we, we never had, you know, we didn't have many of those. Mm-hmm. All the lights go out and you hear Van Halen and mm-hmm. you see the picture of these guys mm-hmm. that, you know, are seniors and you think well, they're they're just in another generation from me. I don't know. <laughs> I'll never be like that. Oh, uh, no. right. At some point you're like, well, who put who put the hours into putting that together? Who sat there with those slides and took all that video or that those images and somebody behind the scenes and I don't know how much the church had said to you, Doug, you know, thou shalt make multimedia. I kind of don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's you just saying, how do I reach yeah. these people? Right. And that was a big, that was a big one. And it, and it was speaking our language. And we said, wow, I, not only do I want to be on that football field, I would love to make that multimedia. And I would love to know. And some of your friends did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they did. My they friends, did those things. Matt right, got so thing involved Matt. with you. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, Matt and I <laughs> saw a lot of hours. You put some hours. He saw a lot of negative and a lot of positive with me. <laughs> I understand. Because you, because you, of course, you live together, and we literally between he and DJ Verkike and yeah. and myself, those early years, those early guys, and they started in middle school with me. And uh, I remember one time we were doing a we were doing a an assembly, <laughs> and we're getting it ready, and we've been kind of commissioned to do this particular one for the yes. school, yes. and w- they let us stay here. All night, they'll never do that now. Should, like yeah, they happen. probably shouldn't have they done should right? have done. Like, Please set <laughs> some they, limits. They trusted us, and yeah. I said, listen, for this to happen, we're going to have to probably be here all night and and, and get this going because it was yeah. like a, a one-time event thing. And all right, you got to get it right. I was so upset with one, a couple of things not going on, and I was just chewing them up, and, and, yeah. they, were, and they were chewing me back because they knew me well, you know, right. and they could, and yeah. they had that right. But I remember some teacher going, hey, you need to calm it down. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're forgetting I have not slept <laughs> in a right. couple of days. It's been about 48 and you're right, hours. And at the end of the day, you've got to make that, you've got one shot right. to make that impression and to communicate your message. And right. you can't not have the projector work. You can't have things not be in sync. And it's, it's hard. It's hard when, especially a middle schooler, for heaven's sakes, they're not captains of detail. And no. so you've got to put it in a way, you know, like, look, mm-hmm. I'm, I wish I could put this to you gently, but we don't have time. This is parenting. Right, I, right. Got, I don't have time to have a mm-hmm. session with you right, right now and talk right. about your inner feelings. we just got to get this done. Well, that's where Matt and uh, DJ, those guys were. Uh, I'm indebted to them. I'm indebted they to their parents. Mm-hmm. That They were so tough. Yeah. And most people could not take the pressures yeah. I put on them. And by the way, one of the reasons that my volunteers, some of them lasted 20, 25 years. Mm. Average volunteer, I think, lasts a year, two years. 25 years. That's yeah. Amazing. Here's what I learned. And, and you and Heather are this mindset. Y'all get this. I know you do just because I know about you as much as I know yeah. you. And that is, I read a book called Unsung Heroes. Mm. Don't even, can't even find it now. I don't even know if it's in publication. That was about volunteers. Yeah. And here's what it said that I had never heard before, and it said, tell them how hard it's going to be. Right. Up front. And yeah. then tell them it's going to be harder than it's going to be. Because wow. if you tell people, oh, it's not going to be much work, oh, it's not going to be that hard, you're lying to them, number yeah. one. And you're devaluing it. In a sense, you're saying anybody would do. I just need you to do it. But I need a body. You know, what I told these guys and emphasized to them on a regular basis and this was mentored to me too, was that this is so valuable. You're you're not going to see a paycheck from this, but the value that you're going to get for yourself, not only in heaven, but long term on this earth, you're going to see people develop and you're going to see leaders develop because you're going to sacrifice things that no one has ever asked you to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want uh, by the way, I apologize to some of those guys. I said, man, that's too hard on you guys. Back sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, we're and always come, revising, no, uh, right? Right, yeah. right. But uh, they stuck with it because somebody told them how valuable it was. Yeah. Somebody told them how hard it was. And the guys that, that trained me, and by the way, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do yeah. student ministry. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to work with youth in that way i want to be a rock star which i was for a while and that's what i did and uh be on stage right since i was nine 
you know, I was a musician. That's all I knew. And uh, I was a sports guy, too, but I was not good at that. I just liked it. You know? But the same and, idea. Yeah, but yeah and the, all those things, though, dovetail together to help me be able to deal with sports people and musicians and media guys and, and, and counselors. One of my best friends is a therapist. Yeah. And he and I grew up with uh, Campus Life, and he did the Youth Guidance Division. We'd go in some of the hardest parts of Orlando and yeah. take his little van and pick up students and bring them back to the Campus Life Center and, mm. and work with those guys. And now he's Dr. Gordon Greenhall. And I send my best people who really need help and really want help and are willing to pay the price. I send them to New Smyrna Beach. I send them yeah. to, to, to Gordon because I know what his track record is. I know he's going to hit a home run. What's one last thing you'd like to say to people as far as uh, the value of being a youth worker in, in some area, whether it's vocationally or volunteer? That's a great question. I'd say love the Lord of God with all your heart, <laughs> all your soul, and all your strength, and the rest will come into being. But uh, sort of yeah. a, uh, another way to look at it is to try to be the person that you wish you'd had as a mentor. You know, yeah. nobody has yeah. the perfect person, but if you if you can take all the people that influence you in all the right ways and you put them together in, in a single person, but try to be that person. Mm -hmm. Try to become the person that you want and try to become the person that somebody one day would have a video and talk about you. Mm. Um, yeah. What would they say about you? It's sort of the epitaph idea. What would you yeah. want on your, on your tombstone? Yeah. And, um, and that covered a lot of ground. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you what, you guys are young kids, and we'll close out with this, and that is the best youth worker you can be is the youth worker as a dad, as a mom and sure. dad to yeah. your children. Because the world is looking at how did you produce, how did your kids get. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I give a lot of credit to my wife. There's right. a lot of times she was a single mom because yeah, of the things right. I did. Because of the all-nighter. Because of the all-nighter. Because of the retreats. When yeah. she was having children, she couldn't go on a lot of those retreats. Yeah. And she was always my best volunteer. Yep. Even when she had her first child, still the best volunteer. She had the second child, still my best volunteer. We had the third child, she needed to retire. She was okay. <laughs> yeah, that was it. But we, she, you can only take so much as a person, right? Yeah. And so Great love your kids, take care of them, and I know you, you are. Yeah. I hope we get to see you guys uh, in public. People like you all, and my wife is this way, I'm the public figure. She was in public because she needed to be for me. Yeah, right. Do what you do with people when you can, as long as you're not sacrificing your family for it. Yeah, that's always the balance that we've yeah. tried to. Yeah, try and I know you have, and I know you do. It's difficult to do. People want to see you, it's kind of like the, uh, I've been watching something on the Yeti. Is there a Yeti yes. out there? You know, yes. And, yes. Do they uh, exist? Is there, or is there a polar bear, uh, brown bear mixture out in Asia or something? Yeah. And so you want to see them because they're rare. Yeah. And people want to see your family because they can't. Yeah. Because you're protecting them because they're where they should be. Yeah. And so, but when they get to, when they get to hear this and see this, they're going to get to a glimpse inside yeah, of so yeah you try to walk that of the of that entity that people don't get to see because you're doing such a good job with yours mm -hmm. you know yeah. but when we're going to get to see it is when they leave and when they build their families right, right. you know that's right that's the so. ultimate test yeah Really You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.